Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Rico, CEO of SourceFind Asia, and I'm back with another one. So this is going to be the first episode of a series we're calling On the Factory Floor. I can't promise how frequent it's going to be, but essentially videos are going to be me uh, doing QC on specific product niches, interviewing Chinese manufacturers, and also doing factory inspections. So the reason why I can't really promise the frequency of it is because obviously there's, there's going to be a production budget behind this. Like I have to physically travel to these places and, and pay for that and bring one of my employees. It's, it's a whole thing. We have to plan it out. There's the actual being at the factory, which usually takes four to five hours to film and then the traveling there. So I can't really do it as frequently as these sort of talking head videos. The talking head videos are literally just me in, in this room and then I'll bang out a topic in, in 20 minutes with obviously some prior planning. And one thing I will say is if you guys like, comment, share, subscribe, the more eyeballs we get on it, the more it tells me that the content I'm making is, is worth it. And also um, I'll be able to put a bigger budget behind it because we'll be getting more clients, more leads towards um, our manufacturing consulting business for it. So specifically this video, uh, this first on the factory floor series is me doing a factory inspection at a high-end cigar and whiskey box manufacturer. start off with what a typical factory inspection looks like so typically when you arrive at the factory right you get there you get out of your car or maybe they picked you up from the train station or whatever and the sales rep is gonna meet you there maybe the factory boss if he's available depending on the size of the factory as well and uh, they're gonna come down they're gonna hit, greet you they're gonna give hand out business cards you know they do the two-handed business card thing sometimes factories that are maybe a little bit more modern uh, a little bit more westernized business cards thing isn't isn't such a big deal so then the next thing will be they'll take you either directly to an office or a conference room so the that's where you sit down they'll offer you water tea snacks coffee whatever it is and uh, you can hang out there for a little bit drop off your stuff and then you do an actual tour of the facilities you can either do a tour first or you can sit down and negotiate first, it's up to you, but I prefer to do a tour first because I'll know within the first five minutes of me being at the factory whether this is a manufacturer that we want to work with. So if we spend two hours sitting down in the meeting room or the office negotiating all the points of the, the project, and then I do a factory tour and I'm like, I can't work with these guys, it's a, it's a waste of time. So I like to get the factory tour out of the way initially. So typically the, the factory tour is they're gonna take you first to the showroom if the meeting room isn't also the showroom they're gonna take you to the showroom then they'll take you to the main production floor and then uh, the main production floor should take you into let's say the painting or assembly line and then it should be like a packaging and QC line and then shipping so depending on the size of the factory some of these these elements might be different some factories might just be a pure assembly line and packaging because you know they don't do any of the actual workshop work like the wood cutting or injection molding or things like that are not done in-house they maybe they outsource it to other factories and then they just assemble the product so it's gonna vary but for the most part you'll see the workshop first paint assembly line then a sort of packaging and QC process the bigger factories that do everything in-house so you first thing you should be looking at is the where they make the molds and where they store the molds the next thing would be the actual workshop where they either do the injection molding and cutting or steel metal injection molding or in this situation it would be the wood workshop where they cut all the woods and, and trim it and, and all that stuff and then going into the painting line and in the situation it would be the varnish painting um, and where they, they sort of steam wash the wood and polish it off a little bit and then onto the area where they do the final packaging and, and assembly and then final QC inspection before they put it into the final box and ship it out. So that's sort of the general flow. If it's a larger factory, they're gonna have everything in-house. This factory is not a large factory, but they're very specialized and they do everything in-house. I'm gonna have you guys watch a montage of 
the things that I just mentioned, the individual rooms, what I'd like you to do is see if you can sort of pinpoint some of the things that I always talk about. Is there a flow to the production? Is it clean? Is, does it make sense? Um, are there instructions? Do the workers look like they know what they're doing? Uh, you know, are they paying attention to what they're doing? Is there somebody else overseeing the work that they do? Is it clean? So those are the kind of things that I want you to pay attention to when you watch this montage of the, the factory space. See the thing with relationships, changing a life, I like the way you think, staying the way you did. Been placed with the same old things, the same old house, the same old fridge, same old friends, the same old shit. I ain't never been labeled this, and the supermarket won't make me big, so I got out of that one. I remember the days as a child with a cap gun, me, my brother, and Daniel. Bless, see why love is about you next. Keep my covers around my bed, and it's comfy now, I see my chest. Bigger than it was before, I'm sicker than I was before, just listen. my bags and leave and don't come back to this cause nothing ain't happening here sometimes nothing ain't happening years and i picture myself in the future with a house with a girl and a car and a tutor for my kids so they can learn new stuff anybody want to get their views up wait get me as a feature never learned in school never peace with a teacher we was all right but we could have been on so much they could never see what we dream of so much that was never eager to teach us so well that's just the way things work Pick up the pace and learn. Oh well, that's just the way things work. I hope you enjoyed the little montage here. Let me just break down the flow of the factory. So essentially the first floor was the main workshops. So they had um, the mold area where they, they make all the molds for, for their boxes. Uh, they design and make the molds there. And then they had the wood, the wood shop where they were cutting all the, you could see the planks and they were cutting them. I, I got a couple of nice shots in slow motion of of the guy sort of putting a plank across the, across the saw. So in that space, um, there was a first guy who was taking a bigger plank, cutting it into smaller pieces. And then there was another guy who was polishing it. And then there was another guy who was even making it into smaller pieces. And then they had a lady that was gluing all the individual pieces into an actual box. So at that stage, they would take that and then they would send it up to the sort of um, the varnishing, polishing, painting line, which was on, I, I believe it was on the, the third floor. So also in that first floor of the workshop, there was also a uh, paper packaging workshop as well. So they do all sorts of packaging. So obviously not everybody is going to want to pay for wood because wood is expensive and it's also difficult to ship and there's all these regulations. So a lot of times people just ship paper boxes, right? Some of the paper boxes that I saw them making looked like shoe boxes. So they had that little space there and you could see that there was a very clear step they had um, you know, they had already cut out the, the boxes, the, the paper, and then they were just folding them and gluing them up. And you could see that step by step by step. And then the last point was like it was done and then they packaged it and, and put it in place. So you could see like there was a very clear flow to the production on the first floor. The second floor was offices. There was a showroom, there was the main offices. Um, the showroom was, was really nice. They had a ton of amazing products, big brands. I think those Hublot, Glenfiddich, Cohiba, because they do whiskey and cigar packaging. So that was pretty good. Um, I really liked all the designs that they had. It seems like they put a lot of effort into the designs. Actually, I talked to them about that and they have a designer that's uh, from Italy. So that, that puts them a step ahead of a couple other factories. So on the third floor, they had a painting, like a power washing, polishing, slash varnishing <laughs> a painting line. So they were taking all the boxes from the first floor and there was like an automatic machine that brings it all the way up. And then there was like that line that takes the, the boxes 
around and then it's being power washed and then it's it's varnished after that and then they paint it if they need to paint it. If they're painting typically with wood, they're just putting sort of like a, it's a lacquer or whatever to make it shiny um, and then or just to make it smooth so that the little wood chips don't don't come off as you're holding the wood, right? So that was, uh, that was the third floor, but they also had on the third floor the QC and packaging spot. So what I actually liked was there was a clip that I really liked where they were doing QC prior to doing the painting process, doing the washing process. And uh, that's, that's important because a lot of times with factories, like you'll just have the product get cut and then they'll send it up to be painted and there's no extra QC step. So there was another QC step. There was a guy looking at the boxes, making sure that they're shaped correctly, making sure that they've been glued correctly, making sure that there wasn't any obvious defects. And then if there were obvious defects, he'd either take it out or he'd fix it himself. And then they put it through the, the polishing and varnish line. And then there was another QC step where once they received it on the, the packaging assembly place, there was a QC person or there was a QC team going through each and, each and every box. And you can see that video of them like cutting off small little edges, touching off small things and stuff like that. And once that QC process was done, they then package it. So that's very important. Like a lot of factories don't have that. It seems like a very obvious thing, but a lot of factories don't, they don't want to hire QC people. They want to focus on just producing, 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 and, and then they put the QC onus really on the, the clients. So those are big things that I, I liked when I went to the factory. So obviously just to recap, like I liked the design. I liked that they had a flow to their production process. I liked that they had QC. And some of the negatives I would say was, it was a little bit dirty, but to be expected, like it's a wood manufacturer, like they're producing a ton of wood products, it's gonna be dusty. But the areas that needed to be clean were clean. I would have liked to see more instructions around what the workers were doing. There were some instructions, but I didn't see a lot of SOPs, like, you know, showing them what the next step would be or showing them what a good quality product was and what a bad quality product was. It's not necessarily bad, but I like to see that. If you have knowledgeable QC people or managers around, and if they're there every day inspecting the goods as they're being produced, then that sort of negates the whole having an SOP thing. But if that person isn't there, who's there? How do the workers know what's an acceptable defect and what's, a, what's not an acceptable defect? That means that we're relying a lot on experience. And if an experienced person isn't there, then you're gonna end up with situations where you have higher defect rates. So that's, that's something to look out for. But overall, like I said, I think if I was rating this factory, I would give it probably a B plus, A minus. Very specialized factory, A minus I would say because they're very, very specialized. Like they know what they're doing. They've been doing it for 20 years. They're not trying to go out into crazy arenas. They do packaging whiskey and alcohol, mostly old whiskey and cigars and some watches, but it's all within the same realm of like wooden, high-end packaging. So they're, again, they're not trying to make Nikes. They're not trying to make other crazy products. They're just really specialized in, in, in packaging and it's very niche and they have a small factory and there's a step-by-step -step to, the, to the factory. So it's an A minus for me. One thing that was really cool was we had a chance to actually um, to fix some samples. So I'm gonna get into a story about samples that we, <laughs> this whole sample situation that we've been dealing with. So essentially we have a client in Ireland who makes high-end whiskey and they were looking to make some high-end whiskey packaging boxes. So they approached us a couple months ago. We found a factory in Shandong province that makes whiskey packaging, very, very reasonably priced. We got the design from our client, the dimensions, everything. We made samples with the factory. First samples seemed okay, but we weren't 100% satisfied with them. Like just as a, some finishing issues, just little things like the metal screws that they're using, the hinges were just off. Like even the cutting was a little bit off. The magnets weren't really working. To, like, so we, we want to use magnets to close the box. So the magnets weren't really holding the box. And this is without even the weight of a whiskey bottle inside. So I was like, I, I just don't think it's going to work. So we asked them to rework them. They sent us another version. We were like still so-so, but in, in Chinese, we'd say chao it was like good enough. And uh, so we, we decided, you know what, let's just send these samples to the client and get some feedback because we don't want to take too long with providing the samples. And we gave them a brief before we sent we sent a bunch of pictures and video just explained that, hey, 
you know, there's a few issues with the sample, but we've been reassured by the factory that these things will be finished, will be fixed in mass production. Uh, what we didn't know was when they received it, they'd also requested samples from another supplier. So that supplier was using a cheaper raw material. So they're using MDF. We were using actual wood. We used like three, four, five different types of wood, but solid wood for the boxes. So our raw materials were much better and our overall design of the box was much better, but the interior was very cheap. And like I said, some of those, those issues with the finishing, the screws, the, the, you know, the, the magnets and stuff like that was just not, not quite there. Whereas the sample that they had was MDF. It was, they were actually charging more money, ironically, but the, the finishing was good and it was pretty much a production level sample. So the client came back to us and said, hey, look, we like the fact that you guys are using real wood. We like the overall design of your boxes, but we can't really justify placing an order with you guys because we have another sample that's mass production level. Yours is clearly not mass production level and we can't go based off of the word of the factory, which we completely understood. So they sent us the, the detailed feedback. We sent it to the factory. This is the Shandong factory, by the way. The factory that I went to see, the one that you just saw is, in, is based in Dongwan. So um, we went back to Shandong factory, said, hey, this is the feedback from the client. We got to get this stuff done. If we don't get it done, we're going to lose the order. Went back to the factory. They made another version. We got it. Weren't happy with the version. They'd improved some of the, the finishing, like the screws and stuff like that. But there was still just the interior was just lacking. So we sent it back. Didn't send it to the client, sent it back. So this is, by the way, the third version of the samples. Sent it back to the factory, they said, okay, you know what, we'll, we'll change the construction of the interior. They sent the new interior back like a week later. Still kind of the same issues. The issues were it was just flimsy, looked cheap, was easy to pull apart. You could see the glue around the edges. And I think we should have some, some pictures of, of that and video of that. So we sent that sample back, right? So now we get the fifth version. All they did with the fifth version was just add more glue. Like that was the only thing that they did was just add more glue. And we were saying, look, that's not, it's not the issue. It's not like adding more glue is going to fix it. You have to, it's just a finishing thing. Like you, the glue can't be visible. It can't, and adding more glue just makes it smell more. It was just this whole thing. So we were starting to lose faith in the factory. And by the way, this is the fifth version of samples. We only sent um, the second version of samples to clients. So now it's been two to three weeks and we haven't sent a new batch of samples. Luckily, the client's not in a rush for the order. They want to make sure that the quality is on point. So now I decided, you know what? Like, I think it's time we started looking into alternative options. So luckily around, it was just random. Around that time, I had a dinner meeting with uh, the gentleman from the States called Adrian. And, uh, you know, we're talking about business. He's been doing business in China for 15, 20 years because we're both fans of cigars. He happened to mention a factory that does high-end cigar packaging. So I'm like, okay, cigar, what kind of materials are they using? He's like, oh. I was like, could they do whiskey? And he's like, yeah, I think they've done, you know, some brands like Glenn Fittich and stuff. I was like, okay, Glenn Fittich, Johnny Walker, all right, let's do it. So he introduces me. Um, this is two to three weeks ago. And we just, we made a, a, a detailed document with feedback from the client, feedback from us, what happened in the past, sent it to this new factory, sent them the samples, asked them to give us a quote, see if they can improve on our samples. They came back, they gave us like pictures of samples that they made before that had a completely different interior that looked really good to us. Said we can do this, we had to increase the per unit cost, which is fine. And then, you know, we paid them for a sample. So we get the first version of samples, definitely better. We just got them like a couple of days ago, on, like on Monday, it's Thursday now. Definitely better than our old samples from Shandong, like 100%, like just the finishing, you know, everything. But the overall design and construction was the same on the outside. Inside was an improvement on the interior. The material that they used was better. Um, the way they glued it, like you couldn't, you couldn't see the glue. It was just better. You could tell that, you know, this, this was a little bit more of a specialized factory, but there were still some issues. One, we have a plate on the outside of a box that they didn't put on, which was weird because we sent them the sample and had the plate and even the quote they gave us had the plate included. Um, and then the interior was not exactly what they'd shown us with their previous samples. So then, you know, we're going back and forth for a couple of days. I don't want to go into the details, but in the end, I just decided, you know what, I'm in China. Why am I going back and forth at this factory via, you know, email and WeChat? Let's just go to the factory. Like it's a hundred times better to just go to the factory, sit down with them for a couple hours, 
bang out all the details, show them physically in person, this is why I can't work with this sample and this is what you guys need to change. Because the communication, you don't know, like you don't know how much attention the person is paying to you and all that stuff. So it's like me trying to explain all this stuff or even my staff trying to explain it, it's just different. So we went there. The two main issues we had were the interior, finishing up the, the lining of the interior and then also the, uh, the, the metal plate that's supposed to be on the outside. While we we're at the factory, they said, hey, you know what? We can take the metal plate off of your old samples and put them onto the new ones and then we'll see and see the indentation for it, which we have a really, really cool clip of them seeing. <laughs> them CNCing the sample like last night. And then the interior, they started working on the interior right then, then and there at the factory and they fixed it and they're not increasing the per unit cost. So, so that's just one of those lessons where it's like, when you're outside of China, you're communicating these things, you think you're giving as much information as you can possibly give and you're wondering why, why don't you understand? And then when you just go there, it gets done. Like we had a 10 minute conversation where I showed them the pictures that they sent me before. I showed them, they showed me samples that they have in, of their other products. I was like, we want this. You've done this. It's like 80% there. We just need you to take it another 20%. And then with the plate thing, they were like, oh, you need to pay for mold. I was like, well, we already have plates from before. Why can't you use those? And they were like, oh yeah, we can use those. And then, and then it solved everything without having to pay more money and without having to increase the pre-unit cost of their product and without having to waste another week trying to go through another version of samples. So the lesson here really is just, if you can go, you should go. There's a lot of different reasons why the communication was off. One, the person we're dealing with, it's a small factory, there's 50 employees at that factory. The GM, also could be called the CEO of the company, was also the person who we were dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis you know, so she was the one that we were communicating sample requirements to dimensions and then, and then she's passing it on to her team. Rather than her having somebody else on the team to take over communication, I understand, you know, sales flow, you want to communicate with the clients first, but for her to, one, communicate with us first and then also manage the production or the sample production, clearly she wasn't, she probably didn't have time to go through all the details we were sending. It's the same thing with me, like if I'm the first point of contact at my company, but at some stage, once I understand the project, I pass on those details to my project manager. And even she passes on those details to whoever is gonna be working on the project on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not working on the project on a day-to-day -day basis because I don't have time to do that. So, you know, there was just that aspect and that's what I noticed when I physically went there. So, super important, go to the factory. Just wanted to leave you with a little, little case study there. So again, high-end whiskey factory, this is the first on the factory floor series like comment subscribe share i want to see you in the comment sections below and uh, we'll see you next week